The unsettling truth about the 1977 wow signal from space. For many years, scientists have stumbled upon hints and even gathered substantial amounts of information indicating the possibility that there might exist life beyond our planet. In 1977, the most unexpected thing occurred. A sound from space was detected and heard by human ears for the first time ever. Theories were flying everywhere as scientists tried to unravel the sound's sweet mystery. One explanation stood out. The sound could have come from aliens. In this video, we're going to dive deep and find out the unsettling truth about the 1977 WOW signal from space. Evidence to prove a point. In 1959, Cornell University physicists Philip Morrison and Glusup Kakoni speculated that the only viable way for extraterrestrial civilizations to communicate to us would be through radio signals. Morrison and Kakoni postulated that this radio signal must be heard along the frequency of 1420 megahertz. Why this specific frequency? It's because this frequency is naturally emitted by hydrogen. Hydrogen, as it happens, is the most abundant element found in the universe. It is therefore possible that all technologically advanced alien civilizations are familiar with the element. Experts are led to believe that hydrogen could be used for interstellar transmissions. More than a decade after Morrison and Kakoni's paper was published, the Ohio State University in the United States commissioned the now defunct Ohio State University Radio Observatory. Nicknamed the Big Ear, the radio telescope was assigned to the scientific search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI. It didn't take long before the telescope captured probably one of the most important, if not the most intriguing, evidence proving that there really exist other intelligent beings aside from humans. The Enigmatic Characters 6EQUJ5 It was just another warm summer night of August 1977 in the Perkins Observatory of Ohio Wesleyan University in Delaware the place where the Big Ear was located. A group of astronomers were working with the telescope, which at the time was pointed towards the direction of a cluster of stars called Chi Sagittari and the constellation of Sagittarius. One of the key persons on the team, astronomer Jerry R. Eman, was a volunteer. His job was to analyze the large amounts of data captured by the Big Ear and have them processed through the IBM 1130 computer. These were then recorded and plotted out on line printer paper. As the Big Ear scanned the cosmos that night, the device picked up on a strange radio signal. It only lasted for 72 seconds, but that was enough to rock the scientific community and the world over. The sound was rather loud, and its intensity was unlike anything that the Big Ear had captured before. Eamon, who was perusing the data collected that night, spotted the exceptional burst of radio waves, which left everyone dumbfounded. In the telescope's printout, Eamon circled the digits 6-E-Q-U-J-5 and wrote the word WOW next to it. The surprise didn't end there. The team found out that the radio frequency from which the signal was picked up was at 1420 megahertz. This was the same frequency mentioned in Morrison and Kikoni's paper. The signal basically gave more weight to Morrison and Kikoni's theory. The signal's capture shocked the world. Obviously, some people were quite ecstatic over it. Others weren't. Just a pair of comets. For more than 40 years, the WOW signal has been used as hard proof that we are not alone in the galaxy. However, not everyone shared the same sentiment. Professor Antonio Paris from St. Petersburg College in Pinellas County, Florida, USA said that the signal could have been emitted not necessarily by aliens, but by heavenly bodies. In his paper that was published in the Journal of the Washington Academy of Sciences, he pointed out the likelihood that the sound comes from a pair of comets. The comets, later identified as 266P Christensen and 335P Gibbs, were within the vicinity at the time the signal was heard. It is also noted in the study that clouds of hydrogen gas measuring millions of kilometers in diameter surrounds Christensen and Gibbs. And as pointed out earlier in this video, the abundant element register is at 1420 megahertz, the same exact frequency from which the WOW signal was spotted. 
This coincidence is too obvious to ignore. Could it really be the comets that emitted the sound, or was it something else? In this defense, Eamon said that the two comets theory could hardly explain this strange phenomenon, because when they looked at other comets, the objects failed to generate the same radio waves as that of the wow signal. The mystery prevails. Eamon and his group of astronomers did try to follow up on the wow signal after its initial discovery, but it was all to no avail. The signal was gone and never heard again. New attempts were made by other SETI scientists, like Robert H. Gray, who first worked with the Meta Array at Oak Ridge Observatory in 1989. In 1996, Gray once again searched the sky for another WOW signal, this time using the Very Large Array. These are a collection of huge wavelength radio observatory dishes located in New Mexico. Unfortunately, all of Gray's efforts proved pointless, as nothing like the WOW signal was detected. Needless to say, the thing just happened one time, and not anything else like it occurred again, from the point of its discovery or to any other region in the cosmos. Could the WOW signal just have been a massive astronomical one-time event, or could it actually be the first time extraterrestrial beings tried to reach out to us? What's your take? Tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.